Hello everyone in podcast land, I'm David. And I'm Jono. And this is the podcast where we dress up, we live life in plastic, and we go party, baby! It's the Let's Wing It podcast. We got a treat for you, and we're going to be talking, like Jono said, about the Barbie movie. Yeah. Greta Gerwig's, uh, you know, take on the toy. Uh, and we've had lots of movies over the last couple of years, the last couple of decades, last couple <laughs> millennia. Where they take toys and they try and sell us more toys by showing us movies about the toys. But this one might be different. Jono, what did uh, you think about the Barbie movie? The Barbie movie. I had, in you know, previous episodes, I'll just explain this really quickly. I have like weird rating systems because I have different levels of expectations before going in. If it surprises me, super high. If it doesn't surprise me, really low. Um... This movie, I had high expectations, and it met them and exceeded. And here's my tagline. This is probably the most important movie that you need to watch this whole year. So huh? I give this a very high 9, 9.5 yep. out of 10. Sure. Yeah. I wonder, how, about you? I, how about you, David? I'm feeling, you know, pretty similar. Uh, if I was to make a tagline, which I had not, uh, it would just be simple. It'd be, there cannot and will not ever be a better barbie movie <laughs> like yeah i cannot imagine i like with actually i actually have been thinking about this i cannot imagine a better barbie movie than this movie and like most movies even movies that i love there's usually like specific things or fundamental things that i would change and there might be like a few little small details in this that i would change but not really it's kind of perfect mm -hmm. uh yeah. and it's such a thrill it's so funny and it it's way smarter than a promotional movie about a child's toy yeah. has any right to be. But it's so, you know, subversive and so intelligent and clever about how it breaks down the meaning of the toy, not just like the iconography of the toy. And you can mm. sense the passion and intent that Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach had in writing this movie. Yeah. And actually just like, this is the one, the first let's wing it that I kind of like quasi super prepared because like um, around when I got home before this podcast, I, I read the whole Wikipedia page and man, this movie was stuck in development hell, just like Dungeons and Dragons that we reviewed a couple of episodes back. Uh, like it was started like kind of research in two, 2009 and yeah, that, it took forever. <laughs> and surprisingly, uh, Margot Robbie is actually uh, her production company. I think Lucky something um, was also co-producing it. It went through so many actors, so many writers, rewrites, drafts, options, and Sony, and eventually got to Warner Brothers. It just went everywhere, yeah. and and it's just so amazing how the CEO of Mattel, I think Yunnan Irv is or something took a huge chance on Gurig and Robbie in this and honest to God, it paid off. Like it, this movie is subverting so many expectations. Um, the movie, I think it's already over $500 million in the box office. If they're going to put it together against Oppenheimer versus Barbie, fortunate enough, Barbie's no, kicking its butt. Yeah. Uh, Oppenheimer does is kind of a longer tail movie. Like people are going to watch it, but it's three hours. It's very dense. We'll talk about it in another episode. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like this movie just made me feel things that I I knew inside, but it, it acknowledged them and it didn't make me feel dumb. Yeah. Well, we can even stick on, before we get too far into the actual movie, let's take on like the struggles it took in getting here. Because this movie was originally had cast Amy Schumer as Barbie. Uh, no and then later would get Anne Hathaway, which is, you know, not a bad choice, yeah. but Margot Robbie is perfect. Um, yeah. and like you said, it's such a big swing because this movie, when it was announced, that's around the time that the first Transformers would have been, you know, in theaters crushing it. Um, yeah. and that was such a big deal. That was such a huge movie. And mm. I remember there was just a, a wave of these, you know, toy movies. There was the battleship movie, you know, <laughs> Team and T was back on the menu, yeah. uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And so this movie obviously went through that. And I want to I want to shake the hand of whatever executive 
made it happen that they put it in the hands of Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig because like this movie is so different than what it should be. Yeah. And it's 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 fucking incredible. It's, Let's talk yeah, about uh, we'd actually no, we'd have to thank the CEO, the current CEO of Mattel right now, because he just literally took a chance going, you know what? We trust you. And just go for it. Let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> but well, so the setting of this movie uh is you know it starts in barbie land where all the barbies live together and they're all like you know super happy because barbie is everything barbie is the president barbie's a nobel peace bro nobel prize winner for physics uh runs the country uh does everything and, and there's all these different permutations of barbie you know just mm-hmm. living their best life uh it's a it's a matriarchy actually that's one thing just to interrupt is that it's the first time i actually had to like research fully matriarchy and uh patriarchy oh really patriarchy because I, I knew yeah. what they were but i was like they say it so much in this show or in this they don't movie. say matriarchy do they i feel like they only ever say patriarchy yeah i did say patriarchy but i was like okay yeah. what's the inverse of that and i'm like okay cool so uh, just the background so matriarchy tldr is that it's run by women patriarchy run by men which is mm-hmm. unfortunate enough our reality today <laughs> and so basically they're in the, the world and Barbie starts, you know, getting these these thoughts of death and these basically starts having an existential crisis and has to go talk to weird Barbie, um, who is someone who's you know been played with too hard that and they find out that they have to go to the real world and sever the, you know, close the portal between the two realms and figure out what's going on or whatever. So mm-hmm. basically it's an excuse to get Barbie out of Barbie land into the real world, which is basically where my knowledge of the plot ended. I thought it yeah. was going to be, you know, Barbie and Ken hanging out in the real world, having a good time, because I remember seeing early on Margot, Robbie and Ryan Gosling in those rollerblade outfits, uh, that scene and the cowboy stuff, like kind of the early montage stuff. Yeah. But as soon as Ken starts being like excited about being like being excited being about being man. in the real world, because it's like <laughs> he's respected just because he's a man and you know, horses and <laughs> the gym and stuff. And just like experiencing yeah. what the patriarchy looks like. I was like, this movie's going a different direction than I thought. Yeah. And I really like the direction yeah. it goes. Holy think, shit. It's good. Yeah. Just to give some context, if you haven't seen it, you don't plan to see it, but you should see it anyways. But we'll talk you about it. See it. Is that the system is that with Barbie land, it's a matriarchy and all the kins are just accessories. So mm-hmm. it's kind of a really stereotypical, like, surface level just like oh it's like the patriarchy in the real world you know women aren't so respected women are respected but that like, they're still fighting the battle i will acknowledge that um as a man <laughs> so that's a problem um but it just like when he starts like looking at books i loved it he i think my favorite scene with ken acknowledging the patriarchy is one is the doctor scene but this one was him going to like a office building and he goes mm-hmm what do I have to do to get a job? And the guy's like, NBA and all yeah. these like high level titles experience. He's like, but I'm a man. He's like, yeah. Like you can see the guy going, yeah. He's like, I'm a, I'm an attractive man. It's like, yeah. yeah. I thought the patriarchy was alive. It's like, well, not really. It was like, but I thought it was, he's like, it is, but we keep it hidden. And I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. It got better. We got better at hiding it. Yeah. That was so true. And it made me, killed me that i was like everyone like right now media would like to tell you that it is more equal to this day it is not unfortunately and you know we're I getting mean, better but it's not there it's not there it's in a way to like i'll know it's just later but it there were steps to, that we're getting there but it's not where we want it to be mm-hmm. but it's a work in progress but anyways back to it is like you know getting like you know ken's in the real world Ken runs back to, um, you know, Barbie land. Barbie to teach, land. Yeah. Barbie land to teach everyone <laughs> the ways, uh, Margot Robbie or Barbie kind of starts figuring out other things of like why she's feeling this. It's because of, um, her owner is, uh, feeling these thoughts and drew kind of different versions of Barbie. And she gets caught by the CEO. CEO wants to trap her. She runs over back to Barbie land. Ken has taken over like all the Kens have taken over Barbie land to make it kingdom. Yeah. And I love the way they describe it where it's like, yeah, like they can't defend. There's no, they have no natural defense against it. Like the, yes. you know, the, the first nations people 
the against smallpox. the colonized small pox because like yeah. they've never seen anything like this and so all of a sudden like yeah. all these you know accomplished women are just like are just servants for these men and they're like happy they're like oh i love rubbing feet oh i love serving you beer <laughs> yeah. um and John i thought Cena's that was such there a, for some reason oh my god that was so funny <laughs> Uh, and it's just like, yeah, this montage of like, you know, Ken world and like, yeah, they all have like, they've taken over the houses and they've manified them. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, oh, the Casa del, it's a uh, dojo, Mojo Dojo Casa house. Ken's casa house. Ca- yeah. Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa house. And basically um, enough. Yeah. Well, going super surface level, cause we have to go in a deep dive yeah. just with the synopsis. Barbie comes back, confronts him, but finds out how Barbie has made Ken's feel and she gets super depressed because she's like, I'm mm-hmm. so powerless against this. They figure it away with the humans because the humans came with Barbie. Um they figure it away and then this is the cool part. Maybe this is a maybe this is actually a good twist movie too. Cause it's like it sets it up as a movie where it's like Barbies take control and everything's back to normal. It is not because they also acknowledge that this is a problem like of our society in Barbie land. We need to make a world that we can put Ken not in power yet, but take steps to integrate them into society that it's not a matriarchy. It's not a patriarchy. It's something evolved and better. And it's great. I, yeah, I thought it was interesting that conclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause like, yeah, it's definitely like, you know, a step in the right direction, but I also thought it was weird because they don't really show us, why you know the president barbie and nobel P- nobel prize winning barbie are mm-hmm. winners like in the real world you know we they are that way because they are designed that way and yeah. so i thought it was weird that like, you know they don't get to have you know a ken that's designed to be yeah. uh smart that way but it was fine and it was so funny and all the kens are so fucking great oh, and so yeah. fucking funny and yeah. so pathetic in the best <laughs> most like hilarious way it's, but um Oh yeah, I too, and also the last thing is that the stereotypical Barbie becomes human. Boom, done movie. Yeah, yeah, and she goes to the gynecologist, which was actually kind of the best way this movie ever could have ended because it's such a like yeah. real thing, but it's such a funny like. The basically what happens at the end, you know, she has yeah. her big like, "Do I want to become human? Do I not want to become human?" And she's like, "I accept. I want to be human." And then yeah. there's she's in the car in the the Chevy car. That boy, I wonder how much Chevy paid to be in that movie. Um, God. No, they show it so way many, too so much. Many shit. Those, like, <laughs> yeah, those, yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But I was like, "Damn, man! Like, yeah. Mattel, you have money. Wait, come on, you didn't need yeah, to do this." Yeah, yeah. But, um, and so they, she's in the car with like the main human characters, and it mm-hmm. seems like she's being dropped off for like a job interview or something. You're not really sure, but they're like, "Barbie, you ready? Like, you you ready?" And she's like, "I'm gonna do this." And she walks in. She's kind of like got like casual casual attire but like you know it could be for like a job interview at like a magazine or something you know whatever Mm. and she walks up at the front and the person's like can i help you and she's like yes i'm here to see my gynecologist and it's like what (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's like you're like oh i'm a barbie girl and it (laughs) starts playing and i was like what (laughs) yeah i i you know i was gonna talk about later but i might as well talk about now it's it's um you know they wrote that part to be a mic drop moment right and now I read it a little bit more. It's you design it to be a mic drop moment, but also to kind of show that, hey, girls, like you, this movie is about becoming a woman, going mm. from adolescence, you know, going through puberty and becoming a virtual woman. And it's like, you know, going to a gynecologist, maybe I don't have this information, but if I was a woman, I'd be scared to go see a gynecologist. I'd be scared going through puberty because puberty fucking like is, I'll be honest, it's kind of awesome for for a male because it's just like we don't go through that many problems we don't have we we go through more emotional stuff i by me like we don't we don't have periods we don't have to worry about you know breaking a hymen during you know when you first have sex uh you know you don't you have to go through we don't have to wear bras like all these things Mm -hmm. like going through puberty for a female is sounds fucking terrifying as a that's fair that's fair and and but she wrote this in a way to get Barbie's excited to go through all these processes because mm-hmm. she had just a bald bulge back then because she was a doll and now she's accepting her womanhood and breaking in there and they wrote it way to help influence 
little girls out there or women who are going through this stuff to be excited like you should embrace this and i was like mm -hmm. that's so awesome i yeah. like that and so the fact that like yeah we're even leading with kind of the thematic exploration of the movie yeah. uh is interesting because like the movie succeeds on so many levels like it's just a fun exciting yeah. movie and that's so stimulating like let's just talk about production design for a minute uh because this movie Perfect. looks incredible like they the so in barbie land it's all basically you know life size or you know human sized versions of all the play sets so it's like the houses mm -hmm. kind of look like barbie play sets there's like the corvettes and or the the kind of like the the old what am i think what's the word i'm thinking of? soft top what? <laughs> whatever a uh, convertible oh, yeah, yeah. the old yeah. convertibles um and like they kind of live in the, it's like this kind of candy colored world uh there's not like much texture to it it's all just mm -hmm. you know just solid colors there's the beach but the beach is not real waves it's kind of like these plastic waves and stuff yeah uh, and they live in this simple life where ken all he wants all he wants is to be noticed by barbie he's like it's a good day if barbie sees me <laughs> yeah i i love that part when like they kind of ex they explore that with helen mirren like narrating like ken would only it's only truly happen when barbie notices him and you just see like all the kids going hey barbie hey barbie hey ken hey ken yeah and i just love how simu lu looks at ryan's like hey ken hey ken and you just you just see ryan gosling's ken and just, is so yeah he's just like huh. oh. like like just that just like these little moments just makes the whole scene so great like well you can yeah. tell every single person is so committed to it like there's no one that's like oh man this movie's stupid and like i don't yeah. really want to like everyone is like showing up with their a game like yeah obviously margot robbie and ryan gosling are fucking fantastic but all the little side kens and side barbies and stuff yeah are just so fucking exciting and they have I, these like little nuances that are just so well, fantastic you're missing the two favorite characters i in my opinion even though they're kind of like they just take dumps on them all day is alan yeah and midge <laughs> i love oh, those yeah. two like the barbie and ken like i forgot about alan i remember alan's like alan is alan ken's alan. buddy and it's like <laughs> no one cares about him and they're yeah. like yep no one cares and we're gonna acknowledge that but later in the movie they will show him in a little like hero moment which is great yeah i like that they give him a little bit of angle and he's the first you know man to join the barbie side like yeah. he kind of like knows that that's the well, better the better world well, that, and I think it's the magic Ken, and also the, sh the fucking problematic Ken is the sugar daddy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, you're right. They, they kind of, like, yeah. live with weird Barbie or whatever. Yeah. Oh, my and, God. And it's funny that they're like, yeah, these are actual, like, concepted, like, bar Kens. Apparently, apparently, for some reason, the magic one is, like, I'm sorry, everyone, but apparently there's, like, like, the symbolize the magic one is a gay ken and then apparently huh. if you look closely the magic one has like a little uh necklace with a ring in it and everyone calls it the cock ring ken and i'm just like i didn't read too much because i was like nope i'm not going down that that rabbit hole but i was like holy shit like they went deep and they respected the entire barbie universe yeah I think it would have been easy to like make fun of Barbie the whole time, but the movie like mm. is so respectful of, you know, the Barbie lore. Mm. Um, and it feels like it's just made by people that are passionate about communicating that message. And the movie yeah. starts with that message of like bar people like Barbie is an important figure to women because, you know, dolls used to be just like a symbol of maternity where you like, you took care of a baby and that's like what women could do. Mm. Whereas Barbie showed people that like, no, you can be a fashion icon. You can do this and she can do anything. She can have any job. Yeah. And I like that it it starts it starts with that, but then it deconstructs even that idea further being like, well, no, it's like it's set unrealistic like beauty standards and it's yeah. like this this perfect world where, you know, these things work out doesn't really exist. And so mm -hmm. everything that's presented, these ideals once examined with more nuance just like kind of falls apart, but there's still this like core of like hopefulness and respect for like you know the barbie ideals yeah. that breaks through and i love when movies have like this core of goodness that mm -hmm. will that'll win and it's like it's goodness that wins yeah um and i just i love how like they kind of also like the like i said like they didn't make me feel dumb and it, everything felt right 
Because even if we look at the 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 Mojo Dojo Casa whatever, like <laughs> you just see like it's like oh no this is like a like a Barbie house that was taken over by like a twelve year old or eleven year old yeah like boy and just like I want to make this cool and then put all the cool manly things and even Ken starts acting like <laughs> a really like pubescent kid and it's yeah. just like. And I never felt like he was, he went too far with it. It just felt like he's now going through his evolution or his yeah. puberty. Adolescence. And, yeah. yeah. Adolescence is just trying to figure out where Ken is. And I like shit, like, holy crap. It's just like this movie's so deep. And well, I hadn't, I didn't, yeah. There, sorry, finish your thought. Finish. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It just that it just, it, it, it felt like every moment was carefully crafted and they filmed it in a way that just like it, you can take it on so many different levels. Like I haven't felt yeah. like this since I watched uh, Zootopia because Zootopia sure. is actually a very smart movie when you let you look at it, racism. Um, yeah. But yeah, like it's just great. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think like even in relation to Zootopia, Zootopia is a very, very good movie, but it's like, it's kind of easy to see how they got there. Whereas this movie, like it took a lot of thought and imagination to, come up with like this take on what mm -hmm. it would mean to be Barbie and how it relates to our world. And I'm really grateful that they did that. Cause like even something as simple as most movies like this, you know, they'd have Barbie land and then Barbie goes to the real world. And the rest of the movie takes place in the real world. I was really grateful. It was only about like 15, 20 minutes in the real yeah. world. And then we're back to Barbie land. And I was like, yeah. thank God this is so much better than the fucking the real world. Yeah, no, even cause I watched this with Jillian and she was like, I, I'm really surprised how short the real world was. Mm -hmm. But also, like, I, she loved it because it, it was just enough because you just see yeah. how people today, unfortunately, enough, Barbie Barbie could be so big, but it's not as big as it was back in the 90s or even earlier than that. Yeah, the 60s <clears throat> but, and 70s and stuff. Yeah, you just see all the, the current teenagers with uh, Gloria's daughter, Sasha, kind of going, you know, everything that's wrong. That's why the world's super sucky right yeah. now. And, you know, just doing typical what teen girls are doing well i i don't know i'm 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 waiting for my my nieces to get to that age so i can be like holy shit i'm i'm fucked um <clears throat> but yeah like and also like too jillian made a really good analogy is that there's so many matrix references in the movie did, did you know oh that? tell me no not really tell me about yeah. it yeah so when barbie first goes to weird uh yeah stereotypical barbie goes to weird barbie she goes Oh, you have the high heels to go back to whatever you want. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, the yeah. Birkinshaw to go into real world. So, I was like, that's a Morpheus moment. And also, when you go into the office building of Mattel and you just see like the the office, uh, the cubicles, I'm like, it's kind of like the. It's so matrixy because she's running away. She's getting chased by the people in suits, which is just the agents and Jalen's like there's so many matrix references because like that's funny. either you want to live in the fake world you want to go in the real world and even at the end she's like i want to be human and she goes into the real world to experience all the uh greatness and also the shit that we have to go through yeah what did you find you felt during that sequence of like she you know she meets the creator inside of mattel but it's like the ghost of the creator uh, but then like she goes to the real world or the Barbie world back to the Barbie world. And then mm -hmm. she realizes like she could become a human. And there's they, like, she kind of steps into this like void and is talking with the creator's spirit and yeah. is like, well, like you could become real. Like, you know, there's all these things. And then there's a montage of like real people and their memories. And like, they kind of starting at birth and ending with, with death and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it cuts, cuts to Margot Robbie crying. And it's kind of like this abstract scene. Mm -hmm. What did, what were you feeling during that scene? I felt a lot of warmth because okay. it's just like, you know, first of all, like the whole scene was really designed to show warmth with the lighting mm -hmm. and the, the, the softness of it. But it just felt like it's, it's a comforting feeling where yes, you know, you know, for someone going through a daily grind of everything, everyone's working eight hour a day to have a two hours of enjoyment every day. And it's just like, it's, also like it just reminded me that we are going through all this stuff and these moments are small but they have hold so much meaning and you going through this shit gives it even more meaning and i just i loved it it just it was such a beautiful moment 
Yeah, I it was one of those. I think it was the one moment in the movie for me where I kind of felt conflicted, mm. where I had been taken on the ride by the rest of the movie, and yep. I was one hundred percent engaged. And then I it was the one of the few times I felt my brain start to be like, "Bro, it's a toy." <laughs> yeah, um, it, it broke the fantasy world a little bit for sure. Yeah, when it's, it's like, like I, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's tough because I appreciate that they tried to put you know, this like strong emotional core mm. in the finale of the movie. And I think it's important because like if you you succeed at having a strong theme and being really fun, mm. that's really good. And like that alone would be a great movie. But if you could hit that home run where you're like, you know, you get a tear. Oh, boy, this is the perfect movie. And I found myself resisting emotionally a little bit around that. Not that it was bad. I think like the execution was really good. But I think that was probably the only moment where other than like will ferrell's kind of introduction as the mattel ceo yeah where i was like hyper aware that it was a toy movie mm, like yeah. it was like i yeah. think they wrote that part because there was also several parts in the movie where they felt they did some world building but they didn't go far enough because they want to keep mm. it simple because here's yeah. one thing is that um like it feels like a lot of the stuff that happens in barbie land influences the real world so the one big thing was the the ken's house like the mojo dojo and then mm-hmm. Will Ferrell gets that phone call. He's like, yeah, we're selling millions of these. And you're like, wait, what? Like, it felt like there was like so many weird things. Cause even though, like them putting Barbie back in her box. Yes. That is a, um, you know, a feminist kind of situation that he reference a lot. It's like putting mm-hmm. women back in their place. But even then you're like, but we actually think about it in the, if you're sitting there in the movie, I'm like, what does that actually do? Does that like just put her into sleep or in prison? And then just kind of shelve her away because those I like, thought to, like those that weird kind of like balance between the two worlds. Yeah, you're right. They don't really say specifically what it's going to do. But to me, it was like, yeah, it'll like freeze her, which will close the portal and like make everything right. And she yeah. might wake up again in the Barbie world at some point. Like it didn't seem like a we're killing you now thing. It felt like yeah. a, this is kind of scary. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, one that- of the things. Oh, oh good, good. Oh yeah, no. So maybe that's why, like, for me, I was actually fine with the ending. I I understand mm-hmm. definitely what you're coming from because it is yeah. kind of like this movie had such a pace, and now it's like in those this pace. But like for me, maybe I'm just overpowering because I love this movie and I just like. Oh, I love yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna forgive it. Uh, yeah. and then because also it's like just showing, it's just the the using that scene just to kind of push that going. Hey, you know, it's gonna be okay. Like, yeah, I, I feel like it wasn't a super crucial scene to what the movie was doing that mm-hmm. it, it didn't bother me at all. I was just I thought it was important to talk about um, one of the things, too, I wanted to talk about was the controversy that it is having. Like we've talked about the th- theme of, you know, matriarchy and feminism yeah. and stuff. Uh, and it's tr- it's triggered all the fucking conservatives. Ben Shapiro's burning Barbie dolls. Uh, that one thumbnail of him being like. Uh, and it's like Ben Shapiro destroys the Barbie movie. It's like, yeah. oh my god, these people must be like making it must be a joke, but sadly it's not. Yeah. But what I wanted to say is, well, first off, they're fucking idiots. Get over it. It's funny. Yeah. Um, but secondly, this movie is kind of like taking a more interesting approach where like the Barbie land, you know, it's a matriarchy. Mm -hmm. But it's criticizing, you know, anything. So in like a sense, I feel like I maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I feel like the Barbie movie or at least Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig are kind of criticizing the status quo of the Barbie world, which is a matriarchy. But I think it's also meant to be like what the patriarchy was. And like we lit it was an era where. okay, so Ken only exists for the approval of Barbie. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know. The, in the 60s, which is kind of, to me, it's like a 50s, 60s sort of world is what Barbie Land is, like the stylings and stuff. Yeah. Women obviously had, you know, like inner lives and all these things. But to the outside world, you know, it was you were a wife. You were a wife and a mother. And like that was your meaning was mm-hmm. for these people. And it's like kind of this feminism moment for these men mm-hmm. to break free from that and find their autonomy. Because like that's one of the things about the Kens is like they only exist for barbie's approval or like they only exist in the eyes of barbie and i thought that was interesting that like the movie doesn't really go all the way it's more like hey you know these things kind of take time and like you know the overarching powers take 
a long time to shift, but like mm-hmm. we have to shift them. And like you look at it, and I felt like I I feel like it's it's not just a biting criticism of mm-hmm. the patriarchy because when you look at it, okay, if Ken represents you know women of the fifties and sixties, and yeah. them becoming aware is you know their moment of like feminism, but in this case, like. You know, m- m- uh, not misandry. That's the opposite. Uh, no. Misogyny. No, but ma- ma- masculinity. Their masculinity yeah. breakout moment. Mm-hmm. Um, that means that like the movie is criticizing like feminism, early feminism for like taking it too far and like overcompensating yeah. for something. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that's in the movie. And maybe I'm reading too much into no, it, but no, I feel no, like. No. It's, the it, movie's uh, kind of, yeah, like trying to c- grapple with the consequences yeah. of like. When someone who's had no autonomy finds it, what the consequences are. No, yeah, no. So 100%, no, like that, you're not reading into it, like reading too hard into it to like make a point. It is all there because like the whole matriarchy and patriarchy systems is they're, they're inverse, like literally inverse mm-hmm. of each other. So it's technically the same thing to swap genders. And it, yeah. well, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I feel. But it feels like this dude, those two systems are, they criticize it and say, it's actually a wrong system. Like you should not have mm-hmm. all women in one power. or the other. You should not have all men power. You just have the person who's right for the job in power. And mm-hmm. it's to a point of like, yeah, early feminism, like they fought really hard because it's a, in a way the open overcompensated and mm-hmm. how unfortunate, enough, like I'm going to bring this up because this is how I thought it's like, you know, the, the Kens acted like how the extreme masculinity or the Andrew Tates of the world kind of want the world to go back because everything's kind of overcorrected as they see it. But they also acknowledge that like, hey, we have to kind of acknowledge that these Kens or these group of people have been mistreated. So we need to like actually make steps to make it better. You can't just overcorrect mm-hmm. and make it balance right now because Certain groups and people do not understand the level of power that they are assuming. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of make it in a way that will take steps because in the movie, like all the Ken's like, Oh, I would like to have a position of power. And all the Barbies are like, we'll start it low and then we'll build it up. And it's a very realistic thing. You have to remember that. Like you just can't put a certain person. You can't just take a woman off a street and make them a present, or you can't have like a man, just like be put into a CEO or like a creative director position of a uh, you know, fashion department. If a woman was running that, like you have to like you, those steps and you have to go through the steps. Yeah. It sucks, but you have to kind of go through that process to make everything equal. Well, it's interesting too, though, because I think that like I, the argument, the movie I think would make is that sometimes you need these radical dangerous shifts in order for people to become aware that the status quo doesn't work. Yeah. And I think like, the Barbie land would never have changed if this dangerous ideology of patriarchy didn't mm-hmm. come in to com- combat. And yep. I don't think the, mo- the movie is definitely not arguing that patriarchy is good. It's definitely no. not arguing that. No. But I think it's arguing that, like, like you said, you need the balance, but that like radical ideas cause violence, mm-hmm. cause change. And I think yep. that like maybe that's me projecting into the movie, but I feel like it's yeah. it's there where you it's have, like yeah. you you have to go through a period of conflict and like tumultuous you know change in yeah. order to get to like moving the right direction this yeah. overcorrection that'll eventually lead us straight yeah it's just to me how i just kind of like it's all about balance but yeah granted mm-hmm. you can't you have to do unfortunately have big things well i mean in the real world you have big protests you have all these big um conscious changes in government and law but it's like, you know, there's, but also you have to also understand that those big changes can make groups that are established very fearful and you become really negative. So yeah, there is overcorrection, but also then there's another correction. It's kind of like teeter totter eventually enough. Hopefully, you know, this is, I would like to strive for is that it just starts kind of figuring itself out or not figuring itself out, but mm. we work in a way that it's perfect balance that it's like, yay. It's just the right person for the job. That's how I always kind of looked in my life. And mm-hmm. so far it's worked out well. 
Well, it's it's hard. It's complicated yeah. because like the right person for the job is someone that has the training and experience to do that job. But yes. they've had pro- but a certain class of people might have mm-hmm. more opportunities to get that experience and do that. So like yeah. at some point you have to put a wedge in the sy- the current system to create opportunities yeah. for people that, you know, might not be the qualified ones, yeah. but they need opportunities to be able to become the qualified ones. Mm-hmm. So it's it's never simple. Yeah. And it's always like it's always interesting on a grand political scale. Mm-hmm disruption is the only thing that causes change like like you know peaceful talks like things that are easy to digest and talk Mm -hmm. about and it's like easy nothing ever fucking changes it's easy to be like oh yeah yeah we'll take that into consideration oh we'll do this we'll do that no you need to disrupt the system you need to like make people uncomfortable you need to you know you know you just you need do quote unquote violence yeah so like i mean a good really recent example is like all the eco groups doing the vandalism on all the paintings, um, they're doing dangerous kind of acts of blocking highways and people are getting mad at them. But mm-hmm. I mean, when you actually think about it, you're like, yeah, like they're doing bad things, getting arrested and destroying things, but also they're at least bringing the uh, problem to light mm-hmm. and probably people so are talking the, about that- it. That one in particular, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but from what I understand, a lot of those can be traced back to actually like oil money. And yeah. the point is to discredit environmentalism, especially yeah. that early one where they threw the paint on the Mona Lisa or the Van Gogh painting. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Something um, like that. that one in particular, they were able to trace it back to specifically oil money mm-hmm. to make it seem that environmentalists are just kooks. Yeah. Uh, and discredit them yeah. and so that to me is not like necessarily the best example like the to me a better example is you yeah. know the the civil, civil rights, rights movements in the it. 60s yeah. Yeah. where it's like nothing was changing except for the disruption like there's the yeah. malcolm x way you know cause fear cause violence and mm-hmm. that makes a change and that's effective and yeah. there's the martin luther king way which was like people kind of discredit how much disruption and inconvenience he caused but he like he was hated in his time and people were like, you can't do this. It's not fair. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you need that level of disruption and inconvenience and it, yeah. it might not be like physical violence, but like violence to the lifestyle in order yeah. to be noticed. No, I understand. So, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just use the eco ones cause that's the only one that came out to mind. But yeah, like mm-hmm. all those ones that you brought up, like George flow movement, the black life matter movement, mm-hmm. like all those things. It is just right now. It's just that we'll just install in this, well, we'll, we will forever be in a transitional period. It will never be 100%. But yeah. I think like what I just will always kind of say, it's like it could be better. I mean, I guess like, you know, even a lot of politicians is like it's not, oh, Obama says it's not going to be perfect. But at least if you make progress and giving especially all those groups opportunities mm-hmm. to be better, like, you know, for example, like, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, the transgender movement, all LGBTQIA plus groups Mm -hmm. they are getting so much more like movie tv time and it's great because it's giving those opportunities i just like for me personally what i would just go with those groups is like just don't make it plainfully obvious that you're pandering to these groups just let it happen and i'll be just happy about it it's tough it's like those things don't just happen Mm -hmm. um no i just don't like it they try to make it painfully often so like hey here's my gay son it's like just don't do that like just be like his son and he has a boyfriend just leave it like that <laughs> yeah i don't know that one yeah. doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you it's yeah. like it's it's don't, still a period of fighting yeah. for inches yeah and so like to me any victory in the right direction is good yeah i um, just i just I go think, like, like idea yeah i just kind of go like this just makes me feel like dumb it's like uh yes i get it he's gay yeah i think it's just like <laughs> one of those things where like some movies do it better than others and some yeah. movies are just better than others Um, And I think like we just are currently living in an era where discussion is at an all time yell um, where there is no discussion. It's just yelling at people. Uh, And so the only way to make a point is to yell it uh, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. And so I think like it might feel like, hey, I'm you know, I believe these things. You don't have to yell it at me, but like someone needs to hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think how I look, it's like that. That part is really good. I just sometimes I always just worry that it's just some sort of movie executive. It's like we need a we need to make a movie for for this crowd because we can milk them for money. And that 100 percent. And like yeah. Disney is. Yeah, you can definitely tell yeah. the the pandery movies. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, they, I'm not I'm not ready to write across the board that level of like poor 
yeah. poor inclusion techniques as being a universally bad thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyways, yeah, back to the Barbie movie. I, I don't like, is there anything else we need to say? Well, I just want to it. talk about the cast in general because it is yeah. stacked. Yeah. Uh, across the board, every Ken, pretty much every Ken, pretty much every Barbie is someone you'll be like, either like, oh shit, or like, oh, I know them. And yeah. they're fucking awesome and different and fun. Like mm -hmm. you said, M was M Marge, who's the Midge, who's Midge. the Midge? Yeah. Super funny, kind of not really in it too much, but she's kind of there at the right moments. Um, <laughs> I, I, but love I love all the Barbies. I love oh, you yeah. going back to the Midge. Will Fowles is like, oh, Midge. I, oh, I remember why we discontinued you. It's yeah, just like, yeah. that is just a, such a funny, yeah. funny moment. But yeah. Um, well, and Will Ferrell's character in particular, I remember from, I thought from the trailers, I stopped watching trailers at a certain point because I knew I wanted to watch it. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to be the villain. I thought like it was going to be like corporate greed. The Lego, and, like, Lego movie. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it turned out, no, he's like kind of just a sweet, innocent guy who wants to do well by Barbie and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was good. I thought it was, that was an, he was a character that sometimes my brain started to fight me on like, Oh, Mattel, Mattel likes this. Mattel likes to seem like the good guys. Well, I mean, it's uh, just, it's just like, um, the one thing is that, um, back to kind of the real world production, cause they read the script and apparently Margo and, um, Gerda had to fight for this a lot. It's like, mm -hmm. Hey, we want to make the CEOs of Mattel like this and make Mattel like this. And it's so mm -hmm. stereotypical and like they look like evil corporations, but they had to keep assuring them that they're like, no, 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 like it'll work out well for you guys. Like it'll be fine. Yeah. Like, don't worry about it. You just don't take yourself so seriously. Take that. We take the brand very seriously. And yeah, it, it really worked out. Cause you get to see like, Will Ferrell is not the fact that he wants to break Barbie or put her back in a place. They're just really protective of this brand. And he just don't yeah. want to destroy it if, cause all the legacy of, of the whole thing. Yeah. And also the company's built on Barbie. I thought it was really funny that the, at least the movie acknowledges that it's like kind of fucked up that yeah there's no men in that boardroom that it's all there's no women there's no women it's all men yeah. yeah it's like oh I want to speak to the CEO and like there's no woman and it's like well where's the CFO and it pans to the other guy yeah. where's the COO that guy uh, <laughs> and so the movie's kind of poking fun at it and again I think that it's the movie isn't like exclusively coming at the patriarchy it's mm -hmm. saying like we need to have everyone together we're yeah. all in this together exactly um, and then and so yeah the other casting ryan gossing was perfect there's one thing i can i wrote down is that every time i saw like a dance number like choreography scene like the first dance party or i'm not ken enough that kind of point mm -hmm. um yeah it felt like every time there was a big group dance i don't know it's if it's ryan or it was a choice in the movie it just felt like he was always a little off like his choreography was just like not up to snuff. Oh, really? Or, I thought yeah. it was. I thought he was pretty good. It's actually yeah. Simu Liu early on that I noticed was like really was kind of he was behind a tiny bit. Yeah. Um. But I think like they were both fine. It was good enough. Yeah. Um. They were great. Simu Liu is awesome. Shout out. Yeah, they were both so fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to that big Ken War scene. That was great. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and like when they kind of start using their like attractiveness powers to fight each other and then it goes from being like a kind of a physical confrontation to a dance battle yeah. and then they kind of work together through it mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of an interesting angle that they kind of bond in like a non-toxic way and then you know that leads to yeah. uh, Beach Ken being able to open up to Barbie and be like I'm struggling I'm nothing without you and she's able to through her maturity yeah. now be like you need to become you know a, a, a self-fulfilled individual you can't just look to me yeah. you need to find your autonomy yeah um, yes, actually, but that whole fucking sequence yeah cool. that whole part like yeah thank you for actually good thing we didn't end it because i really wanted to talk about this it's that part kind of made me feel so many things about hey i love you and i just i'm doing so many things for you but you're not acknowledging me and mm -hmm. how so responsible how he's expressing these feelings really openly and a really good well he didn't do it really well at the beginning but eventually he got no. there but yeah. he eventually expressed like this is how i'm feeling is that i love you i'm made for you but you just do not acknowledge my existence so it's kind of like yeah. almost like a little bit of like simp culture a little bit and then how also it could be 
progressively toxic, like really quickly yeah. onto some performers out there. Yeah. And then Barbie also acknowledging it going, yes, it's also a little bit my fault, but also you yeah. have to realize that you have to be something. Yeah. I think one of the things that's so brilliant about this movie is like the different layers that it works on. And we kind of talked about it a little bit mm. in terms of, you know, it's like they're all adolescents at the beginning of the movie. They all have this idea of what it's like to be, you know, a, a full person or whatever, but it's like this artificial idea. And through exploring the real world, Barbie's kind of the first to mature into it. And I think that it's such a cool lens to see this movie as or through is that like Barbie as a doll was sort of a tool to help young women like look to adolescents, look yeah. to growing up, grow into young women mm -hmm. because it was like, yeah, you go from being like these like little baby dolls mm -hmm. to, you know, a, a grown up woman. You're playing with a grown up woman. You're getting dressed up. You have these jobs, these yeah. things. And the fact that this movie was able to take these characters from, you know, like childhood adolescence into, you know, Barbie, especially mm -hmm. or stereotypical Barbie, especially becoming like a young woman. Mm -hmm. I think is so brilliant as it's balancing all these other elements. It's yeah. still like the movie takes you on the journey that the doll is supposed to take you on. And mm -hmm. the fact that they were able to make it work all together, all these, all these elements together, yeah. fucking incredible. It's such a, such a master work. Like it's, I'm not even, it feels like I'm exaggerating when I'm like, this movie is like a masterpiece, Yeah, but like it's brilliant. And these people that are at the top of their game, these yeah. brilliant writers and directors and actors like they showed up and they did the best job they could. Yeah. And yeah, sure. It's a Barbie movie, but this movie fucking rocks. It's, it's more than a Barbie movie. Like that's the weird thing is that, yeah. Like when it, when it first got announced, I was like, Oh, like they're just doing it because transform made a billion dollars yeah. and became a huge franchise. Those Barbie movie. Like I said at the start, it is a movie that, I if I was still back at home or back in Canada, I would I'd bring my whole family, my nieces and nephews, all seven of them, and be like, You're yeah. watching this fucking movie and you are gonna learn it. Like you got you gotta be like in you I'm gonna just like this is you have to learn from this and then just make them watch it because it's just it's such a important thing. I hope this movie gets studied. I hope this movie gets like yeah. enjoyed and passed around. And all those conservatives, like you've mentioned, Ben Shapiro, like, fuck those guys. Like, literally, you guys are just yeah, going so against it. Stupid. You probably secretly love it. I'll, I'll, I'll force it down your throats. But you're just a pandering to those groups of people who are just going, fuck this, blah, blah, blah. I'm just not ever going to like this movie because it's such a small yeah, well, crowd. And it's such a, money. you know, it's such a surface examination of the movie to not understand the nuance of it. Yeah. And like you said, they're going in with an agenda to pander to their angry, misogynist audience yeah and so that's what they're looking for is yeah. like fuel to f fight that they're not actually coming to the movie in good faith and yeah. so in the end my message about that is shut the fuck up yeah. shut the fuck up if you're not going to watch this movie in good faith yeah just shut the fuck up and go away yes yeah, just <laughs> seriously you know, i'm fucking like, done yeah like i mean yeah i think the only reason why you're yelling and shouting is just so you can get attention it's just yeah like, it's I mean, embarrassing yeah. and you're a jokes yeah i mean i wish conservatives were back going to the fiscal stuff instead of like i'm trying to like make you feel like it's a back good old days but you know what the good old days were really bad when you actually think about it it was only good because you're the only one percent that enjoys it um yeah. but yeah actually back to one thing about the casting um what was it the person who plays gloria america Ferrer? Ferrera? yeah i think she was what do you think of her like because i've seen her in other things um, I thought she was really good. Mm -hmm. I thought, or I, I liked her kind of feminist speech in the middle that snapped the Barbies out of it. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like, I'm not trying to bait you. I'm not trying to bait you. I'm just, I'm yeah. kind of curious what you No, thought. no, no, no. Uh, I really like that. And I really like that sequence after when they're like kind of giving you like the one line that will snap the Barbies out of it. Yeah. Uh, and then the responses that the Barbies give as they're doing that montage. Um, I, I felt like I cared about her. I like the reveal that you think that Barbie's there for the daughter, but it's mm -hmm. actually, it's America Ferreira's doll. Yeah. Um, and she has the memories and the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought as an emotional, like, you know, the audience's eyes into the movie that needed explaining and stuff. Yeah. She did the job really well. And I felt emotionally connected to her 
uh, pretty, mm. pretty well. Yeah. So I'll expand on that. So, um, yeah, I think she does a really good job of representing kind of like the common denominator woman and what they experience like in at least in North America. Mm. Um, but her, I've watched her in this other show called Superstore. Um, oh she's, yeah. She's working as like a kind of like kind of same situation, but just as a very low paying job at least at the start. And, you know, whenever I heard her talk about how inequality and all these things, it just, to me, she, I, I would, my head would snap back going, Oh, it's just, she's just playing that character from this show. Cause her tone of yeah. voice is everything's the same, but yeah, she was the only one that I kind of was a little bit bothered by, but I did appreciate how she delivered. I did appreciate her speech, but just like this, maybe it's just her. And I've just seen her in superstar for like five seasons and watching that and just kind of brought me back there. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like when a character you like kind of just gets to exist as a different character. Yeah. yeah. And Not then, so bad. I think my favorite character though is weird Barbie with Kate Mc, McKinnon. Mc, Kate McKinnon. Yeah. Yeah, McKin- yeah. She was great. Yeah. Like, and like, I like the layers they kind of give her yeah. and stuff. She's and then great. like the last job was like, Oh, we should really, I'm so sorry for calling you weird Barbie behind your back and in your face. I love that acknowledgement that like hey we fucked up and this is the, the yeah. we've been talking about you and then she, but then i like that she's like i, I own it yeah it's <laughs> and fine I was like, it's good, good yeah and, but then she's like a job it's like oh sanitation and it was like th- it like i immediately go that's weird but hey that's weird barbie let's go yeah, yeah i thought that was a i didn't fully get that one but uh yeah overall obviously we're both pretty high in this movie uh, it's the same. I, I will. We'll talk about Oppenheimer next week and we can compare. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, which well, like, one? Which one people should should see? Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, just to, spoiler. It's both. It's both. It's going to be good. Uh, just just for context, I was planning to see this movie at 10 p.m. on Friday night and I was going to go watch it with Jillian at nine, uh, Barbie 9 a.m. the next day. And it, it was like right at 8 p.m. I was just like. There's no way. It was like I cannot. You would have fallen asleep yeah, for sure. I cannot do this. So I'm gonna watch it at 9 p.m. on Friday. So it should be good. Um, and we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, we'll talk about it next week, and then we'll queue up some other stuff. I'm actually really excited to go see Oppenheimer. Um, but I'm now excited now because I'm gonna watch it in the lower quality IMAX, and you you saw it at the Christopher Nolan's meant. Yeah. one of 30 theaters in the world apparently <laughs> only like five minutes from my house i was pretty fucking lucky <laughs> yeah yeah i will say chris nolan is like the most hipster filmmaker just make people i don't know jump. if he's i would call him the most hipster when wes anderson's <sighs> right there dude <laughs> i don't know wes anderson doesn't make me have to go to like the specific theater to go watch a specific movie to he does though he does like limited releases for for a lot of it it's I like guess. french dispatch was hard to go see in theater Really? Uh, for at least a couple months same with like asteroid city was limited release first so you, like if i wanted to see asteroid city i would have had to go downtown vancouver <laughs> oh tinseltown i'm guessing yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, so yeah anyways it's it's a great movie go watch it mm-hmm. um yeah i just i'll probably watch this movie again and dissect it and then yeah i'll talk about it a little bit more maybe who knows i uh on my closing thoughts, my okay, we'll we'll do our section of like what should people watch this week. Yeah. Uh, mine. I speaking of Wes Anderson, I watched Asteroid City, um, and my thoughts are, if you really like Wes Anderson, uh, it's it's pretty good Wes Anderson. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you have watched Wes Anderson and you don't like it, don't watch it. It's uh not one of his better movies. No. Uh, I was pretty disappointed. I'm a I'm a pretty big Wes Anderson fan. Like Grand Budapest Hotel is one of my like favorite top 20 I, movies of all time like just to add in the grand budapest hotel is that i'm so glad i didn't watch it when everyone else was watching it i'm glad i did my usual wes anderson thing and just saving it until i needed it mm. so oh good. so good yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah <laughs> it's like that movie is like a deli- delightful little morsel of pastry and you bite into it you know like, it's literally oh, the pastry so in the movie it's literally yeah, it's that so good it's the, whatever it's called it's just like yeah it it's one of the few movies that made me cry yeah, yeah. and so uh asteroid city is missing the emotional core that grand Buda- budapest has um it's intellectually interesting like it's it does um you know the like m- 
multi layers of meta kind of thing going on. Uh, and it's interesting, but then I found I couldn't connect. I didn't connect with any of the characters. Um, it felt cold. Um, and so not a bad movie. If you like Wes Anderson, it's worth a watch. Uh, mm-hmm. If you don't, if you haven't watched any Wes Anderson, go watch Grand Budapest Hotel yeah. or Rushmore. Um, and if you haven't watched French Dispatch, go watch that too. Cause yeah. that's a way better movie and than Asteroid City. If you City. just want like a really easy movie to get yourself into Wes Anderson movies, just go watch Fantastic Mr. Fox. Great movie. Yeah. It's another great one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are me, some of my faves. Yeah, your favorite. So one movie I watched, uh, I've watched a lot of things, but here's one that kind of reminded me because I was talking about it today with Marquez, is to go watch um, Air. It is the story oh, yeah. of Michael Jordan's Air Jordans. Um, but it does it really creatively. Uh, this is not really a spoiler, but uh, Michael Jordan is in the movie, but you don't really ever see his face or you never really hear oh, okay. him talk. So it's about yeah. the team and the things that they had to do to get this shoe into Michael Jordan. Because also one thing is that Nike at the time was never like a big brand name like it is today. They were kind of like the running shoe. So, for example, um, if you know shoe brands, Asics. Asics is really good shoe, but they're not really well known brand. Like they're not like a cool brand. You're not gonna buy an Asics jacket just yeah, to be cool. Exactly. So it's that whole those elements. It is kind of probably um, sugar coated a little bit because everyone's sure, yeah. kind of be those like those like kind of like conflicts and stuff. But it's probably worse than what it was shown in the movie. But they kind of want to represent Nike in a good way. But it's yeah. a now, don't watch this movie to go, this is how I'm going to make my big brand. Do not watch it for that movie. For that reason, just watch it because it's a great way of showing how a team gets together and launches something and then enjoys its success because it is the most recognizable brand in the world. So, sure. Go watch Air. It's on Prime Video. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that's the, the two movies we're recommending you watch or don't watch this week. Uh, and if you want to, you know, ask us other questions, you can send us an email at letswingit22 at gmail.com or... On our Twitter, let's wing it pod. Yeah. Or our personal ones, the chosen David or John O'Tan eighty six. Yep. Uh, uh, although not, yeah, just not on Twitter anymore. It's uh, X that we should uh, talk about it later. I actually, I was yeah. Well, I am definitely. I haven't really used Twitter. Like I actually probably shouldn't even put my handle on here. I should <laughs> just give email because yeah. I'm not really. I just I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. But uh, I'm wait. I was actually gonna install uninstall it the other day, but I'm gonna wait till the app is switches to X and then I'll uninstall it so they get the feedback of like. Oh, this is bad. No. Um, oh, no. We need it. We need you to use it. So you just click like on all the episode links to show to your audience. So we kind of, we kind of need it. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, I'll make a, I'll make a Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thanks for everybody for listening. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.